So a very warm welcome to this guided metta meditation. And um, I am Venerable Chanda Bhikkhuni, currently living in the UK. Um, I've been a disciple of Ajahn Brahm for about 12 years now. And I'm working to establish the first monastery for bhikkhunis in the UK, um, very closely with Ajahn Brahm as spiritual advisor and uh, the chair of our trust. So um, it's really a privilege and an honor to be able to contribute something for his birthday celebrations. And I think there's nothing better to contribute than the gift of Dhamma and the opportunity to share the practice and deepen our practice together. So it's a beautiful choice that uh, the BSWA have made to offer metta meditations for this whole week because metta is one of Ajahn Brahm's very strong, um, beautiful, wonderful, powerful qualities. And I think it's the power of his metta that enables him to not only um, get into very deep meditation and uh, share his wisdom with us, but also to serve the Dhamma and to spread the Dhamma um, within Australia, but far beyond to people all over the world. And I've traveled with Ajahn Brahm in England and in other places. And uh, it really is true that on the tubes, on the buses, people will come up to him and just say, Ajahn Brahm, you've saved my life. You know, you don't know how much you've helped me. You've saved my life. And it's one of his great joys. And it's one of, I think, all of our great joys to have that contact with Ajahn Brahm and to have such a, a wonderful, noble teacher in our lives. And uh, just the other day, I was talking to Ajahn Brahm and I'm about to enter a retreat myself. Um, it's the Veins retreat at this time for monastics. And he said, uh, I said to him, I hope I can contribute something for your birthday. Uh, I'm really not sure what or how or, you know, how I could ever express my gratitude. And he said to me, the best way to express our gratitude to our teachers is to practice meditation, to practice in seclusion. That is the best gift you can give to me. That is the way that you make me happy. Um, and that's really what he's here for that we deepen our practice. Um, he doesn't need our cards, although it's very beautiful to give him birthday cards and express our gratitude and devotion that way and to give him whatever gifts, you know, to help raise funds for Newbury Buddhist Monastery, which is his wish this year. Um, but the best way we can really respect and revere our teacher is to practice his teachings, to imbibe those teachings and to become the Dhamma as he has. And what better example do we have than Ajahn Brahm? So he gave me a beautiful uh, verse, actually, just to, uh, to bring this home. And this verse is from the Dhammapada, number 205. And it says, having tasted the flavor of seclusion, paviveka, that means deep seclusion, and the flavor of peace, upasama, deep peace. She is free from anguish and stain, imbibing the taste of the bliss of Dhamma. So this is what Ajahn Brahm wants for us. He wants us to practice in seclusion, to practice uh, loving kindness, to practice letting go. And loving kindness and letting go are almost one and the same. You know, a big part of the third noble truth, the way out of suffering is chaga, giving, giving away, giving up, letting go, essentially. And metta helps with that because we're thinking not only of ourselves but of all beings. And so the way I teach metta I see it as sort of two different practices, which completely overlap, but we can focus either on metta as an intention, metta as the motivation of our practice, which aligns our practice with the second factor of the noble path, yeah, right intention, right motivation, avyapada means metta, benevolence. Yeah, that's one of the uh, right motivations towards everything we experience in our body, in our mind and in our life. So we can practice it as an intention towards whatever's arising in our mind. And we can practice metta as a cultivation. So we can actually use metta as a vehicle and basis for the rest of the practice. We can use it as a means to enter into the deep samadhi states of jhana. Yeah. So today I wanted to share metta more as a cultivation. We'll begin with metta as an intention the way of looking at our body, calming down our body, relating to it wisely, relating to our minds and our emotional worlds wisely. And then we'll practice um, cultivating thoughts of loving kindness to different categories of beings. So the purpose of loving kindness in this way is to overcome ill will, 
towards uh, beings. And we start with somebody easy, such as ourself, which is always not always easy, um, but towards the benefactor. So we can include Ajahn Brahm there right away, uh, or any other teacher that you feel a lot of devotion and, and gratitude towards. And the friend, the loved person, the person who you have neutral feelings towards, you don't really have strong feelings of liking or disliking. And then a person that we might find difficult. And we'll do that in a way <clears throat> that's hopefully quite um, gentle and that allows you to just invite in anybody you feel at ease with. You know, don't take somebody really difficult that's very triggering or that can bring up some trauma. Um, we'll do it in a gradual way. And I, would, I think with meta meditation, it's important not to expect anything, just as in all meditation, we practice for the sake of practice. We don't practice for the results. We practice to tune up to the beauty of the intentions of loving kindness, just to rejoice in the fact that we're trying, we're cultivating, you know, we're learning to let go. And if you feel some joy, some pleasure arising, that's wonderful, but don't expect that. If that doesn't happen for you, nothing's wrong, you know, because you're gradually inclining your mind in a wholesome direction, which is aligned with the path. And the Buddha said, whatever we frequently reflect and ponder upon becomes the inclination of our mind. It becomes our character. It becomes our um, entire way of relating to the world. So even if we can just soften our heart a little bit, you know, just open our heart a little bit towards others, towards ourselves, it will be of great fruit and benefit. Okay. So I want to share some loving kindness practice today. And with all the practices of meditation, the teachers only offer suggestions. We offer um, invitations. They're not um, prescriptions. You know, if it's not working for you, please just fall back to what you're familiar with and know that whatever you practice, you can never go wrong as long as you keep in mind um, this beautiful way of relating to the world, which is kind, which is gentle, and which is making peace. Okay, so if we're ready with that as an offering for ourselves, each other, and also for our teacher, Ajahn Brahm, then I would suggest you take a couple of minutes to get really comfortable and choose a posture, not that your mind thinks is um, a good posture to have, but that your body would like to adopt. So whenever I give this instruction, I also take the opportunity to look inside my own body. And I usually find that one of the ankles is slightly pressed into one of the shins. You may wish to close your eyes at this point. When your eyes are closed, the eyes to your inner world start to turn on. You start to see more. And tune in to your body's needs. So just gently contacting your body sitting. And we're going to begin by establishing an attitude of mindfulness, awareness, awakeness, along with kindness. So that as you become aware of your inner world, You also learn to care for it. So just gently bringing your awareness to any part of the body, perhaps the tips of the toes or the top of the head and spreading this kind awareness through each and every part of the body.
welcoming yourself into this space. You may come across sensations which are pleasant, maybe tingling, warmth, ease, and sensations which are less pleasant, perhaps aching or heaviness, tightness, tension, throbbing, pulsing. Whatever they may be, just softening around those sensations with an attitude of friendliness and warmth. And notice how that attitude helps soften, relax the body and the mind without pushing anything away. Just coming into the present moment with kindness. Allowing your mindfulness to build. And when you feel settled and ready, staying connected to your body, I'd like to invite you to imagine yourself sitting in a very safe, congenial place. And in this place, there's a big table if you're indoors. Perhaps there's a log fire burning, some tea, some cakes on the table, and many chairs. Or if you prefer, you may be outdoors in a forest or on a meadow. The trees gently swaying in the breeze. And you have a feeling of deep safety, deep ease. As though nothing is missing in the whole world.
And I'd like you to invite into this space someone who you have feelings of gratitude, maybe even reverence toward, perhaps a teacher, a spiritual friend. a parent, a child, even a friendly dog. And bringing their image, their presence to mind. Stop wishing them thoughts, intentions of loving kindness. connecting with your deepest heartfelt wish for this being, this special person in your life. You may choose between one to four phrases, just keeping them simple, but meaningful for you. such as, may you be happy. May you be well. May you be safe. May you be at peace. And imagine looking into this person's eyes, their eyes shining back at you, perhaps their face smiling, the tears relaxed. Whilst keeping in touch with your own body, any sensations in the area of the heart, if that's comfortable for you. And repeating each phrase calmly, clearly, meaningfully. and listening in the spaces between each phrase. To where the mind inclines to that experience of loving kindness.
And as this loving kindness starts to develop, starts to build, you might invite other dear friends people in your life into this beautiful circle of loving kindness. Imagine them coming to take a seat at the table or in the circle in the forest. Enjoying this beautiful company, sharing the tea, the cakes, the sandwiches, and just basking in this loving kindness. It keeps on growing the further it spreads. Using the phrases to help direct your mind towards loving kindness, if that helps for you. And pausing in between each phrase to allow the loving kindness to take deeper and deeper root in the heart. And as this loving kindness keeps developing, you may find other people start to come along to this beautiful meta gathering, the space for everyone here. So see if you can invite in people in your life who maybe relative strangers to you, people who 
You don't have strong feelings of liking or disliking toward. Perhaps a neighbor, a colleague working in a different department to you. Someone you see at the garage or the store. You may that know their name or not. You may have no expectation or vested interest in this person's well being. But you recognize that they too desire happiness and recoil from pain. So see if you can widen this circle of metta to allow in any person who is a little less known to you. Imagining them joining this beautiful metta party. And also relaxing, becoming at ease. The features starting to glow. As they too feel welcomed, feel embraced by this powerful loving kindness. And your heart too continues to expand. And just allow this to become very natural, no effort at all involved. People come, people go. But the warmth, the kindness, the convivial atmosphere remains. And if you feel comfortable, if you feel safe and at ease, you may wish to invite someone who you find difficult into this circle. Maybe someone you have differences of opinion with. Perhaps there's some envy, resentment, unfinished business with. Perhaps it's a person who you would like to forgive, who you would like to get along with.
Or perhaps someone you'd rather keep at a little bit of distance. So remember that you have the choice here as to how closely you allow them to come in. You're seated, surrounded by your teachers, Ajahn Brahm, your friends, people who you feel only wish you well. And in this context, see if someone who you find more difficult can also enter this atmosphere. Maybe through the power of your loving kindness, you can start to see their goodness too. You can imagine this person also relaxing, softening, speaking kindly to others. And just notice the effect this has in your heart. Staying with any discomfort. Softening around that. But also knowing your limitations. So that if anything, any painful experience is triggered, you can always come back to the loved person or even to yourself and focus your metta back there.
And soon this loving kindness starts to naturally want to spread even beyond this lovely meta gathering of all kinds of individual beings. It starts to spread outwards and unbounded. Boundless and immeasurable in the forward direction in front of you. So just allow this loving kindness, the energy of peace, friendliness, warmth, to spread as far as it will to all beings in the forward direction in front of you. All beings, visible or invisible, far or near, human or non-human, to the animals, insects, birds, to the creatures of the rivers, lakes and seas, all beings, to the devas, the invisible beings, whether you believe in them or not, just the possibility that these benevolent beings exist. to all beings who are living good, virtuous lives. And to those beings engaged in perpetrating harm, all beings who simply want happiness, and peace. May they all be free from suffering. May they be liberated. May they be free. And this loving kindness starts to spread out to the sides, to your left, to your right. And also behind. Gradually engulfing this whole world with all the various life forms spreading upward to the skies and down below. Just like the sun shines impartially on all beings without discriminating based on gender, sexuality or race. All beings who breathe, who cherish their lives, may they all be well, happy, and safe.
May they all be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they come in contact with this beautiful, noble Dhamma. And practice for their liberation. May their hearts be free. Imagining for a moment this whole world lit up with a golden glow. And as a result of our combined loving kindness, even for a moment, there is peace. So just rest in this expanded, exalted state of loving kindness. Without any effort, just open to the possibility of unconditional, universal love and peace. for five or ten minutes before we close this meditation. So we're coming close to the end of this practice together. Just gently, gradually bringing your awareness back inside this room. Back to your body. to your posture, sitting on the floor or on the chair. Notice any sensations, any feelings or emotions that are pleasant, peaceful,
And bring this same loving kindness, the same feelings of benevolence and warmth to yourself now. To this being that you know so well with all your struggles, your challenges, your successes, your joys. And connected to your heart. Wish yourself happiness, freedom from suffering, and the highest peace of Nibbana. Using words, intentions that are meaningful for you. Giving yourself the gift of forgiveness for your so-called shortcomings or mistakes. And recognizing the goodness, the purity of your heart. Your capacity to experience the highest bliss. So let's dedicate the merits of our practice to our wonderful, beloved and revered, noble teacher, Ajahn Brahm. For the immeasurable gifts of Dhamma that he's given to all of us. his establishment of a very strong and inspiring dual Sangha in Perth and beyond. For all those thousands of Dhamma talks that he's given across the years to monastics and to lay people alike and to truly embodying the qualities of the Buddha for being a living representative of the Dhamma that we're so fortunate and privileged to know. So let's share the merits of our practice so that Ajahn Brown can continue to live long and healthily despite his wishes. (laughs) He has no attachment to this life. But so that he can simply continue to spread the Dhamma and so that we can follow in his footsteps too and truly become worthy disciples of our great teacher, Ajahn Brahm. So I'd like to finish with a little metta blessing chant so that your practice 
can deepen and benefit countless other beings around this world. Sabe Sata Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Purgala Sabe Atta Bawa Pariapana Sabe Sabe Poesa Sabe Aria Sabe Anavia Sabe Deva Sabe Manusa Sabe Winipadika Aweva Hontu Abya Paja Hontu Aniga Hontu Sukiatanam Pavihavantu Dukamunjantu Yadalada Sampatito Maui Gachantu Kamasaka You wish you can do the three sadhus Ajahn Brahm style with me. <laughs> Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. <laughs> Very good. Ajahn Brahm always says the ha 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 is the most important part. So this is how we can end every meditation with a smile. <laughs> mm-hmm.